you guys. So this is chapter five, section chapter eleven, section five, solving rational equations. Eleven dash five, solving rational equations. Our learning objective is to solve rational equations and proportions. So it's more fraction and variables in the fractions. Um, so I wanted to show you when you're solving an equation with x's in the denominator, how that works. And we spent all day yesterday doing finding common denominators so we can combine fractions like this. Um, so this is the second step to that. We're uh, finding common denominators and um, solving. So, when you look at 5 over 12 minus 1 over 2x equals 1 over 3x, the denominators are 12, 2x, and 3x, and if you want to find the least common denominator, um, between those three items, it's 12x, because... 2 goes into 12, 3 goes into 12, and 12 goes into 12, and then you have to have an x. So we want to make everybody have a 12. So instead of finding common denominators, we're just going to multiply everything by 12x. And when you do that, you end up getting rid of your denominator, which is awesome. So if you multiply 5 over 12 by 12x, 12 the 12 and the 12 cancel each other and you get 1, so you're just left with 5x. If you multiply 12x times 1 over 2x, the 12 and the 2 um, reduce down to 6 over 1, and the x and the x reduce to 1. So you're left with just the minus 6. And then 12x times 1 over 3x, the 12 and the 3 give you the 4, and the x divided by x give you just 1. So ultimately, once we find the least coming out, that seems to be the most difficult portion of this. We just have to solve 5x minus 6 equals 4. So when we do that, we get 5x equals 10, because we add 6 to both sides. And then we divide by 5, and we get x equals 2. And then because we're kind of new at this whole common denominator kind of thing, we want to make sure... We check our answer, so we plug in 2 just to double check, and we get 1, 6 equals 1, 6. All right, let's see if we can apply that to these problems here. It says, what is the solution of each equation? Check your solution. So when you turn in your assignments, and it says check your solution, I expect there to be a check. And as a part of the answer. So please read the instructions carefully. I want you guys to get full credit for each item that you do. All right, so if we're looking at our denominators, I have 3, I have x, and I have x. So my least common denominator, lowest common denominator, is going to be 3 times x. So I'm going to multiply everything by 3x. Everybody gets it. And then now I'm going to get my multiplication on. 3x times 1 over 3. The 3 on the top and the 3 on the bottom give me a 1 over 1. And the x times 1 is just x. And here the x on the bottom and the x on the top give me 
just a 1, and I have 3 times 3, which is 9. The x on the top and the x on the bottom just give me 1, and I have 3 times 2, which is 6. Oh, easy peasy. Now, we, now this equation that was terrible up here is easy to solve, basic, basic. x equals negative 3. And it did say to check our solution, so I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to go 1 third plus 3 over negative 3 equals 2 over negative 3. Uh, 1 third minus 3 thirds, is that equal to negative 2 thirds? And 1 third minus 3 thirds, that's negative 2 thirds. It is equal to negative 2 thirds, so we are all checked out here. All right, next, B. Let's do B together. So my denominators are 7x, 3, and 3x. So I have a 7, a 3, and an x. That gives me 21x is my LCD. So I'm going to multiply everything by 21x. Third as well. Everybody gets a 21x. If I do it to everything, my equation remains equal. So 7 goes into 21 three times. It goes into 7 once. X goes into x one time. I get a 3 times 4, which is 12. Uh, 3 goes into 21 7 times, 3 goes into 3 once, I get 7 times x, which is 7x. 3 goes into 21 7 times, 3 goes into 3 once, x goes into x once, and 7 times 7 is 49. I'll take away 12 from both sides. 7x plus 49 minus 12, which is 35. x is equal to 5 and 2 sevenths. Don't even ask me how I can do that. Years and years of practice. Well, now I have to check this. So I think I'm going to use 37 over 7 to check my solution. So here's our check. We're going to do a check up here. So we got 4 over 7 times 37 sevenths plus one third equals seven over three times thirty-seven sevenths. Seven on the top, seven on the bottom gives me one. I have four thirty-sevenths plus one third equals um blah. I'll put a calculator. Because be expected to do this high level math in my head this early in the morning. Okay, so 3 times 37 is equal to 111. So this right here is 7 over 111 over 7. When I divide by a fraction, I multiply by its reciprocal. I can't remember which day we did that, but we did that. So this is 7 times 7 over 111 or 49 over 111. What? So, now, if you want to fuss with more fractions, you are more than welcome to fuss with more fractions. I, however, am going to do it on my calculator and see if I get an equivalent ratio. So, 49 over 111 is 0.4414414441. I'm going to do 4 37ths Plus one third. Four, four, one, four, four, one, four, four, one, four, four, one. These are equivalent statements. Are we all good that we have checked our solution? So we'll check by it. Good. Awesome. Let's do that. Check. We're going to be able 
to find a common denominator and um, it's going to be a nice factorable answer. So let's um, look at a problem where that is the case. In this, where we have 1 minus 1 over x equals 12 over x squared, you, I, you look at your denominators and they're 1, x, and x squared. So the LCD is x squared. And we end up multiplying everything by x squared. When we do, we get x squared minus x equals 12. And this is a nice quadratic equation. We did that a couple of chapters ago. So solving quadratic, remember we minus 12 from both sides, so we get everything on one side. And then we say what two items multiply to give us 12 and add to give us negative 1. And that's negative 4 and positive 3. And then we say what does x have to be to cause x minus 4 to be 0? That's 4. And what does x have to be for x plus 3 to be 0? That's negative 3. And then we have to check both answers to see if they make a true statement. So we're going to test out when x equals 4. You plug it in and you get 3 fourths equals 3 fourths. And then we're going to test when x equals negative 3. And you get 4 thirds equals 4 thirds. So both of them are solutions. And Unfortunately, this is the section where sometimes one will be a solution and one will not be a solution, so it's important to check your solutions. All right, and that's a great multiple choice question when they say, you know, what are the solutions and you work it through and there's two, and but one of them doesn't work, and then you pick the one that has two and you get it wrong, it's terrible. Um, so let's solve these guys. Let's do let's do this one. Let's do B together. So I only have one denominator. So he gets to be the LCD. And that's D plus 3. So I'm going to take everything and multiply it by D plus 3. And when I do that, <clears throat> d plus 3 divided by d plus 3 is 1. I have only my d plus 11 on the right-hand side. I'm going to FOIL this guy out. <clears throat> and then combine like terms. So I get d squared plus 9d plus 18 equals d plus 11. <clears throat> and I'm going to move everything over to the left-hand side. <clears throat> so I'm going to subtract d from the other d. And I'm going to subtract 11 from the other number. Need more room. And when I do that, I get d squared minus 8, or plus 8d plus 7 equals 0. <clears throat> and we're going to factor this out quadratically factor. So what two numbers multiply to give you 7 and add to give you 8? And thankfully, 7 is a prime number, so there are only two numbers that do that. 1 and... And then you want to go, when is d plus 1 equal to 0? And when is d plus 7 equal to 0? So d is equal to negative 1. And d is equal to negative 7. 
and then we're going to check our solutions. A little bit more page here. So I want, I'm going to rewrite this guy down here so I can see it a little bit. D plus 6 equals D plus 11 over D plus 3. So I'm going to check my negative 1. So I'm going to go negative 1 plus 6 equals negative 1 plus 11 equals negative 1 plus 3. Negative 1 plus 6 is 5. Negative 1 plus 11 is 10. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Is 5 equal to 10 hours? Yes. Check. So now we have to check our negative 7. So we got negative 7 plus 6 equals negative 7 plus 11 over negative 7 plus 3. Negative 7 plus 6 is a negative 1. Negative 7 plus 11 is 4. Negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. Is 4 over negative 4 equal to negative 1? Hmm. What's 4 over 4 equal to? And then you have 1, negative 1 positive, that gives you a negative. Both of these guys check out. So they are both yes solutions. All right, so let's look at a work problem. Love to do work problems on standardized testing. So exit exam, SATs, ACTs, um, SBAC testing, all that I guarantee you will run into a work problem. I don't know why they, everybody, who's anybody who makes tests thinks that work problem is important enough for you guys to see it all. So Amy can paint a loft in seven hours. Jeremy can paint a loft in this, at the same size in nine hours. If they work together, how long will it take them to paint a third loft apartment of the same size? Okay, so let's evaluate um, what, we, what information we have. Amy can do seven hours. Jeremy does nine hours. We want to know how long they can, if they combine their efforts, how long it would take them to do one. And then our plan is we need to find what fraction of a loft each person can paint in one hour. And then write and solve a rational equation. All right, so we got what Amy can paint in one hour plus what Jeremy can paint in one hour should equal what fraction of a loft can be painted in one hour. Well, we know that Amy can do one seventh in an hour because she paints a lot. takes her seven hours to do one, so one seventh is her time. Um, Jeremy can do one ninth, and together they're... 1 over t. We don't know because that's what we're looking for. So we find the common denominator between 7, 9, and t. And that would be 63t. We multiply that out. We get 9t plus 7t equals 63. 9 plus 7 is 16, so we get 9t plus 7t is 16t equals 63, and then we divide. And we get t is equal to 63 sixteenths, or 3 and 15 sixteenths, or almost 4 hours. So it'll take Amy and Jeremy about 4 hours to paint the loft apartment together. Alright, so let's do a work problem together. Yeah. One hose can fill a pool in 12 hours. Another hose can fill the same pool in eight hours. How long will it take both hoses to fill the pool together? So if we follow the example that we have up here, we're going to go 1 to 12 and 1 eighth equals 1 over t. It's a wonky looking t, but it's a t. 
So the between 12, 8, and T, you can go 12 times 8 and go 96 T, but that gives us a big number. I know that 12 is 2 times 2 times 3, and 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So they both have 2 times 2 in common. 12 has a 3 that it brings to the table, and 8 has an extra 2 that it brings to the table. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 2 is... 20 bowels. So 24 is our L. So everybody gets a little 24 T. Twelve goes into twelve once, twelve goes into twenty-four twice, and this becomes two T. Eight goes into twenty-four three times and it goes into itself once, and this becomes three T. T goes into T once. And this becomes 24. Heck yeah, easy problem. This is 5 T's equal to 24. Divide both sides by 5. 24 divided by 5. 5 goes into 24 times with 4 left over. So it's a 4 and 4 fifths. Boom. Not 12 hours, not 8 hours. Let's do a couple more problems together. And then we'll call it good. I don't want to send you off into the atmosphere without practice. So let's do A together. B plus 2 and B minus 2. Their LCD is just the two multiplied together. So I'm going to go B plus 2, B minus 2, times 3 over B plus 2, equals B plus 2, B minus 2, times 5 over B minus 2. When I do this, let's cancel, cancel, cancel. This is 1 and 1. The... I did it wrong. Hold on. Let me get it back. B minus 2 times 5 over B minus 2. There we go. Now, cancel, cancel. One, one. I have 3B minus 6 equals 5B plus 10. Solving, I want to subtract three B's from both sides because look what I put right here. Solving equations. The method for solving equations is we distribute, which is get rid of parentheses, no parentheses, we already did that. We combine like terms, no like terms on the same side of the equation. We add or subtract our variable. We take our smallest variable and we subtract it from both sides. Then we take whatever's number, whatever number is hanging out with our variable group and subtract it. And then the last step is to divide by 2. We get negative 8 equals B. Boom, let's check that because that's what we do now and that we're responsible. So we put negative 8 in for B, both here and here, and we get 3 over negative 6, we get 5 over negative 10, negative 1 half is equal to negative 1 half. Alright, one more, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have an extraneous solution. What? So one solution is not going to work out. 
So between x squared minus 4 and x minus 2, I know x squared minus 4 is a difference of perfect squares. P is equal to x plus 2, x minus 2. So in fact, my LCD is x plus 2, x minus 2. So I got x plus 2, x minus 2, times x minus 4 over x plus 2, x minus 2, equals, ah, uh, erase this, so close, so close to me, so close, uh, x plus 2, x minus 2, times negative 2 over x minus 2. Let's get our canceling pen out. Plus x plus 2, x plus 2, canceled. x minus 2, x minus 2, canceled itself out and makes 1. X minus 2 and x minus 2 divide each other out to give us 1s. And I'm left with... x minus 4 equals... 2x minus 4. Solving equations, I want to take the smallest variable amount and add or subtract it from both sides. And in this case, it is negative 2x. So I'm adding 2x to both sides. So this is 3x minus 4. Well, it's negative 4. I'm going to add 4x to both sides. And I get 3x equals 0. So when I divide by 3, x has to equal 0. All right, let us check that. So I'm going to take these two items. I'm going to plug 0 in. And then see if get an extraneous solution. Thankfully, I do not. Uh, you! But, what answer can I not equal? So x can definitely not equal whatever makes that denominator zero. Cannot equal 2 and cannot equal negative 2 because that'll make this denominator zero. But, so. Negative 4 over negative 4 is equal to negative 2 over negative 2. 